I had some people ask me about making a video when I made the weights for the front of the snowblower. So this is just a quick uh, video of weights that I'm making. Uh, to start out with, I just wanted to let you know that actually I am working on a thumb for my little trencher there. And I didn't forget about that. I should be doing a video soon on that too. But um, it is in the shop and uh, being worked on. But in the meantime, um, in order to see if I can make that air and snowblower so it's really usable in my driveway, um, I've got to make some weights. Now, when you you know you go out and you buy the um, Aaron's cab, you would think they'd give you everything with it that would you know make it usable on the snowblower, but they don't. They um, pretty much tell you you've got to buy weights from them. I think it's 10 pound piece of steel that you buy from them and by the time you buy it with tax and shipping it goes for about 90 bucks a piece and from what I'm reading online you actually need two of them to counteract the cab especially if you have any hills. So you're talking they want you to put out another $180 for weight. So um, I just had this piece of uh, inch and a quarter square bar stock here that I'm going to make temporary weights out of at least. The Aaron's ones go up inside the, um, the snowblower chute. I'm going to put these on top for now just to see if I can make this machine usable in my driveway. I don't want to put too much time in it yet. If it works out I'll cut some plasma cut some you know panels for inside like they do it but in the meantime I had this old piece of inch and a quarter square bar stock that was you know just about the right weight that I needed to be the equivalent of two of the Aaron's weights. So first thing I did is I started cutting it up with that um, that dry cut saw that I got. And um, I have to tell you, that thing's really been a great saw. I really like this uh, bigger saw here for cutting the steel because you just don't get hit with the little chips like you do with the little rage saw. So this one seems to be, um, you know, kind of my favorite for cutting heavier, thicker steel stock, you know, where I'm in the shop working. So... Um, you know, it cuts it like butter and I don't know how long the blade will last but it's been doing good so far. So I had this rusty old piece of steel that um, I'm just going to cut two strips to bolt on the top of the snowblower. And it's pretty nasty so I'm going to use one of those uh, Harbor Freight polycarbide abrasive wheels there to clean it up. They do a pretty good job at, you know, when you got a lot of dirt and dust and, you know, scale and stuff on an old piece of metal. They clean it up pretty good, you know, real quick. And I just want to get this cleaned up good enough to, um, you know, slap a temp temporary coat of paint on it. So, you know, just spend a couple of minutes going over each of them. And, you know, you can see it cleans it right down and, um, you know, gives you a good enough surface to put a coat of paint on. And I got this, uh, this little sander that I just used to break all the corners on everything when you machine something. It's another one of those Harbor Freight tools I've had for a long time and it just seems to run forever, you know, no problems. So I got them all cleaned up pretty good and, um, you know, marked out the location of the holes and center punched them. And I was going to put them on a drill press and, uh, you know, just drill them by hand. And then I changed my mind. Um, I just decided it would be just as easy uh, to just throw them on the uh, bridge port. In the meantime, uh, I got my wood stove cranked up here. It's pretty cold outside and I got nice and warm in the shop so it's, you know, enjoyable for working. That's been a, a really, you know, good stove. Um, I used to have some of those barrel stoves when I first bought the uh, house and they just about burned down the pole barn so, you know, I just put that little stove in and it works good. So anyhow, I... Um, I just decided to throw these things in, to stack them up like that and just throw them in the uh, milling machine and, you know, just go back and drill them. And you always start out with a, uh, a center drill and then, you know, I'm just going to be drilling here with a just a smaller drill that will, um, you know, allow me to put the final size drill through it. And um, it's actually pretty mild steel, so it does drill pretty easy. Um... So I got that, uh, that small hole popped through it. And then I wound up just drilling um, 3 8 clearance holes in there. The bolts that are used to um, bolt it onto the snowblower, 5 16 bolts. So um, I just figured I'd drill these out with a little bit of clearance so I didn't have to mess with it later. So, um, you know, with the bridge port, you can use the auto feed too. And uh, there it is. You just kick the lever and it automatically feeds the drill down. And... Um, you know, makes it a real easy job to, to drill. So, 
only trouble is you get some real long chips because there's you know no chip breakers on the drill or anything but it doesn't make it a pretty easy job and then you know I got the first one done and then I just went back and um, had to start out and just you know do the same thing on the other side after I flipped it pretty amazing though it probably cost errands about six dollars each to make the weights and then you know by the time you get them you pay tax and shipping on it it cost you 90 bucks for that same weight so um, it's quite the profit in those things um, I'm surprised that somebody like uh, somebody doesn't start making aftermarket ones for like 20 bucks a piece because you could still make a profit so anyhow I got the um, the holes in both sides drilled and then you know it's just a matter of taking a little uh, counterbore bit and just break away any birds that are you know on the that are created when you're drilling there so you know just hit the counter little counter sink and um, you know just hit it both sides and that cleans them right up now a, another little tool that I've really been enjoying is that um, evolution swarf collector that I picked up a while back um, this thing is just great for cleaning up whenever you're you know dealing with metal chips or anything like that um, I use it all the time and um, you know it's still working perfect you just uh, you know run it over the chips and it picks them up and then you just put them over the recycling bucket and you pull a little handle out in the center and um, you know it just dumps all the chips in the bucket nothing sticks um, they all fall right off and I think it's a really great tool to have because I used to have these chips all over and you know be mixing them in with the garbage and everything else so and I think this is a real handy thing so I got a got you know a couple coats of spray paint on them and just got them sitting by the wood stove and uh, let that dry and you can see they were about ten and a half pounds a piece um, in the end and I think I've read that the Aaron's ones are a little over ten pounds a piece so I made two of them so you know it's equivalent to the Aaron's so now it's time to just uh, you know put them on the snowblower so I checked that everything was going to fit first and. Then I had a piece of that um, that foam rubber that you use on uh, for mounting a camper shell on a truck. It's a uh, inch and a quarter wide by three sixteenths thick. It's a nice, nice soft foam. I figured I'd put some of that on just so I wouldn't put any marks on the snowblower or anything, um, just in case I try to unload it on Craigslist or something. So, um, you know that that just sticks on there self adhesive on one side and then I just took the um the actual mounting bolts and you know it's soft enough that you can just take and um push them up through from the bottom and you know I put a big nylon washer and a fender washer and um another washer on the inside so I wouldn't damage the housing and then um you know just uh I just put them up through from the inside um and I had bolts that were long enough to, you know, hold both of them. So I got the uh, the one weight on there, and then I'm just going to throw the other weight on there. And you can see they actually just uh, cleared that shovel there. It just fit perfect, so the, the size of them is not bad. Um, so I got the two weights on there, and then I just got another nylon washer and washer. And then I got a really good one of the um, black insert nylon lock nuts that, you know, those things never come loose. So, um... I figured I'd put that on there just to lock it all together for now. So I got the, um, you know, I got all the bolts started on both sides and then just had to go back with a ratchet and tighten them up. And I, I know that I was struggling on the hill trying to keep that front down. It was just, you know, anytime the wind hit the cab or anything, it would just fly right up. So um, I'm hoping that the uh, 21 pounds is enough here. The only one way to find out is just wait for the next snowstorm and, you know, I'll be making another video showing if anything's any better or what's going on with it. Yeah, so the Aaron's technical support basically said that, um, you know, there's no way to adjust the auto turn. That's that's how it is, um, basically. And, you know, that if I replace the skids, it might help. So, um, you know, they're basically saying if you go buy another pair of their $50 skids and try it, it might help instead of making something, you know, that's usable on all surfaces coming out of the factory, I guess. Just kind of ticks me off. 
Yep. So I, you know, I got everything all tightened up here with the uh, the ratchet, and you know, these just having those mounting holes there, it's easy enough to throw more weight on if I need in the future too. So there's what it looks like, kind of a clues job, but you know, I just want something to do some testing before I spend too much time on it. So I got that, you know, the weights all on it. And then, you know, looking at the uh, the skids on it down here, you can see how they're designed and how they dig into the grass and dirt and gravel. They're very poor design. They're only made for blacktop, it looks like. They've only got about a half inch raised lip on them. They've got sharp edges that dig in, and that's probably half of the problem. And like I said, Aaron said they want you to buy another one of their skids to, um, to try and make it better. But... Um, I don't see why their engineering department didn't have the brain seeing how it's a flippable skid to make it so you could have one side for blacktop and then just flip it and use the other side for gravel situation. So, you know, you wouldn't run into problems like that. It seems like it's um, just another one of those money grids where they want you to go out and buy a different set of skids to make it work in the gravel. And another thing I noticed is that the gas tank only holds about two quarts for an engine this size. That's kind of ridiculous. And the cap just doesn't doesn't fit right. It, it goes on there, but it still doesn't, you know, fit fit real nice. And it wobbles around. And um, actually, I'll show you. You can see it. It just slips around. And I can see water and ice getting in there because it all melts on top of the engine. And I also had to put some tie wraps to hold the cab up. I put them back there around the handlebars because in the wind, no matter how tight you make those front fittings on it, it's just garbage and it just the wind blows it down. So I had to add these tie straps to keep it up. Yeah, they did a real crummy engineering job on that whole cab setup. And then um, if you look at the plastic on it, you can't really see it here, but wherever it had those crinkles in it after being out in the cold and the wind, you can see there's like little um, pinhole slits starting in those areas. So I just don't know how long this plastic is going to last, but it, it looks like it's going to um, self-destruct uh, in a short amount of time. And if you look at my driveway now that the uh, snow is melted on there, you can see how those kids dig down and they wander all over in the gravel. They pull you all over and, um, you know, they dig down and it goes from one skid to the other and um, in the gravel and the dirt. So, you know, those skids are definitely causing some big problems. And I just don't know if uh, adding some more weight is going to actually make it worse to counteract for the cab or not. But um, only testing will tell. I'll make another video as soon as I, you know, get some more snow and get to try it out again. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.